Good morning, modern steaders. We might be starting the next phase of the next project today. Fingers crossed that that happens today. Either way, we still have plenty of our own projects to be doing today. Good morning, Figaro. You gotta test the goat's grain, make sure it's safe for him this morning. How is it? You know how construction goes. You just never know what to expect and when to expect it. And then this year with everything going on in the world, construction projects are just that much more difficult to plan right now. Materials are hard to get. It's just, it's a bizarre time right now. Good morning. You didn't finish all your lettuce. Want your grain? Put that over here, ready? One, two, three. Figaro does what Figaro wants. Sure does. Figaro thinks it's his farm. As long as he's happy. Good morning, Nora and Ivy. Hope. Girls ready for breakfast? Come on. Ivy wants to be Hope's buddy. I don't know if Hope's gonna have it though. You got a new friend, Hope? He's gonna jump in the feeder first. Oh, Nora. Ivy, I haven't even put any food over here yet. There you go. I know, you girls are supposed to be down here eating, but the little goats always jump in. Little P, you're bigger than the feeder. Come on. You need to get out. There you go. Now he's over here checking out their water for him. Is that good? You like apple cider vinegar in your water too, mister? Are you drinking the water now? He is. Willow wants to go and see the breeding bucks. Not today. Your chicken's liking it over here. I'll we'll feed you down this way. I can't wait till they stop laying eggs. Hi, huh, girls. Morning, boys. The boys are doing a really good job on this section. I'm gonna say we got one, maybe two more days left here. And this is what it looked like before. We'll have to move them over once they have this area cleaned up a little bit nicer. You guys enjoying this or what? They seem to be loving it. Look at that jar. She's so easy. That milk's not for you, Figaro. No, sir. You ready for pasture? <laughs> and 
Everybody wants to sneak out and go see the breeding bucks today, so we had to use this gate. They're all down there waiting at that gate. Ivy found her mom. You can't go see the breeding buck right now, little P. You gotta wait till fall. I need to drag our coop slash brooder up so when they do show up, we're not in their way. This isn't the final resting home for the coop yet, but we can't get this moved until we have up there finished. So I just need to pull this forward so we're not down here. We haven't moved this coop since this winter and there was snow and ice everywhere. So it's going to be interesting to see how it's going to drag on the ground. I took a little bit, I had to get it broken free, but then it moved, I had to put it in four low. It's been sitting here all winter, so I got stuck here from sitting here during mud season. But this is where it'll lie for a little while until we get all of the other projects finished up and then we'll move it to its final resting home. What did you chicks think of that, huh? Did you like that move? These are American Bressy chicks. They're another breed of meat birds. All right, I'll let it stay here until we get some of our other projects finished up. And then we can move it again, further this time. We have some Lodge cast iron pans and skillets. They come pre-seasoned, but they're really rough. I don't know if you guys have any Lodge stuff, but they're seasoned, but they're rough, and I don't, we don't have luck cooking on them this way. So about a year and a half ago, we did what we're gonna be doing today to a pizza skillet and it works amazing. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna remove the old, new seasoning, smooth this out a little bit and then re-season it. And it's gonna make a world of difference. You're gonna be able to slide everything on and off. It only takes about five to 10 minutes per item to sand them down. It's really quick and it's worth the time. So we have three we're gonna be doing today. First thing I wanna do is I wanna wipe them all down and get out any of the seasoning that's still damp. Get that off, because what it's gonna do is it's gonna end up gumming up our sandpaper, which is fine, but the more we can get out right away, the less we gotta worry about our sandpaper gumming up. I'll just give everything a quick wipe down. Now, we're not gonna be doing the outside. We're just doing the inside. Ooh, my thumb got stuck. Can you see how rough that is? Listen to it. That's what we want to get rid of. We're not going to sand it down to completely bare metal, but we're going to get it smooth. And look at this one. It's almost like a nail file. 
I'm gonna be standing out with my DeWalt Orbital Sand with 180 grit. This first sanding I'm gonna be doing, it's gonna be to take off the seasoning. It's gonna end up gumming up our sandpaper, so this is a sacrificial piece of sandpaper. <laughs> already starting to gum it up. We're going to hit all of our pans with this. Nice. Bam. So this one we're gonna throw away and we'll start with a new piece. I gotta put some gloves on so I don't keep getting black hands. You can keep using an orbital sander with 180 grit or higher. Or if you have an angle grinder, I like using my angle grinder. It makes it just a little bit faster. And I'm gonna put a sanding disc on my grinder. I have these flap discs like we have for that goat trimming tool. That on. I'm using a 60 grit flap sanding disc. This is what we have for a coarse sanding disc. All right, now that I got the heavy stuff taken off with the grinder, if you don't have a grinder, just use a heavier grit sandpaper. I only have 180 here right now. I'm gonna go back with the orbital sander with a fresh piece of 180 and re-sand it all nice and smooth, making sure we get into all the corners nice and smooth so that way when it's seasoned, you don't have stuff getting stuck in your corners. This is what they look like after. I'm not going for a mirror finished or to get them perfectly smooth. Even if they look like this right here, that's good. You just wanna make sure that their pits are most of the way gone. And when you feel it, you just wanna feel it smooth. Then we're gonna bring them back up to the house. We're gonna season them. I just washed my pans off. I'm gonna stick them on the burner, get them dried and preheated. We have our oven preheated to 325. We want them warm, but we don't want them hot. 
We want the cast iron warm so it'll absorb the oil. I like using flaxseed oil. The way I can find it is in pill form. So I just cut the tops of the pills with scissors and then I just drop it on there. Then I'm going to give it a good rub down of oil. Now the first time you apply oil to it after you sand it down is when it really needs a heavy coat. After the first time it only takes a little bit of oil. I like using a handkerchief, that way you don't have the lint of a paper towel getting stuck in everything. I'm going to stick it in the preheated oven that's preheated to 325. Now these are a little warm. set my timer for 40 minutes. So after 40 minutes, I'm gonna shut the oven off. I'm gonna let the pans cool down by themselves and then we'll be right back. So I let my pans cool until they're warm. They're not hot, but they're still warm. I wanna make sure the oil's nice and dry. I like doing a couple of pieces of cast iron at a time because it's a little bit of a process, but right now the oil is dry, it's not tacky, but the pans are still warm. If your cast iron's cooled off, warm it back up on the stove top like we did last time. I'm gonna grab a little bit more flaxseed oil and our rag. Give them another good coat. You wanna make sure you coat the sides all the way up. Getting that nice golden brown color that we're looking for. We're not looking to get the seasoning all the way black. We'll get that over time as we cook in it. We just want a nice light golden brown color. And you can see they got a nice coat of oil on them again. I'm gonna stick them back in the oven for another 40 minutes and then we'll be right back. Gonna go in and check out and see what's new or that needs to be taken care of in the greenhouse. See the temperature. You coming, Tiana? Let's see. See what the temperature is. A little warm. Pete's sweetest plants are doing really good. I think that's pretty neat. So you take the, pull the dead head off of here and then you get all those marigold seeds. Potato plants are doing really good. All flowered out. We have noticed a lot of cucumbers, little tiny cucumbers starting, but it doesn't seem like they're really growing. So um, I'm gonna try to self pollinate today. I'm just going to take the paintbrush into the male female, get some pollen on there, and then gently put it on the female, which is the one with a little cucumber on the end. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get these cucumbers to really start growing. So this one right here, see it's just got a small little, so that is a male. And this one right here, it's a little cucumber, so that's a female. So I'm going to take my paintbrush here. See if I can get some pollen. I should have got a black one so I could see better. See if I can get some pollen on this. I don't know if you can see a little bit of pollen on there. And I'm gonna gently transfer it.
You picking a snack for the chickens, aka weeds? Chicken food. Chicken food. What do you think for eggs? Mm, 10. 10? Uh, 12. I still like the number 14. How many eggs do you think today? I think. I think. One. Come on. Three. Four. Not oh, looking so hot today. Five. Unless you're sitting on the mother load, which you could be. Six. A really crinkled one. So that means it was stuck in the egg laying port. That's six, seven, eight, ten, twelve. Mom was right today. I was? Yep. She's getting too heavy. She's getting big, huh? Yeah. Well, are you sunbathing over there, huh? You comfy? So they have showed up. And started pushing some dirt around. We're taking this elevation down a little bit so it meets the same grade as here. So we'll have more of a driveway area down here. And then same with over here. And then we're gonna bring all this dirt and push it over here and flatten this area off for the next big project. Unfortunately, we gotta take the pumpkin plants out and that first row of corn. It's gonna be in our way. And he started working on getting this rock and he says it's just as big in the ground as it is out of the ground. Are you girls hungry? Huh? You're always hungry. Don't touch the fence. Ready? There you go. Oh, it's going to be nice to have another flat spot right over here. It'll make more sense the further we get along in this project and what we're doing down here. What do you think we're adding over here? So we got some pretty big ones, like right here's a monster. Look at this baby. I'm curious to see how long the tap root is. Woo Look at that thing. I guess I don't need these. Nope. How many beets do you think we need? Look at that tap root. There's a monster one right here on your side. Oh my goodness. Where did you come from? I got another big one right here in a clump of three. So if we pull it out, the other two will have more room to grow. Got another big one right here. I think my voice just cracked. Probably one more is fine. If one more. Tanner. I ended up doing four coats of oil on these. We're gonna be using this one to roast our beets tonight.
All right, so I'm just gonna put them back in here and then add the avocado oil and salt. Avocado oil on my beets. Some salt. This is Redmond salt. I'll that until it's all covered and add more oil if needed. This is the chicken stock I made yesterday and I'm gonna use two cups of it to boil to do make my quinoa in, to boil the quinoa in. And then I'm going to get the rest into these jars and I'm just gonna do it to the fill here line so that way it has room to expand and the, and the glass doesn't break in the freezer. I haven't had any issues with that happening, but I do only go to the fill line. See how this seasoned cast iron pan's holding up. Look at that. Just sliding. No stickage. Now that's how a cast iron pan should work. It's better than Teflon. Nothing is sticking to it. Slides and glides nicely. Oh, we got some pork chops on the grill. Man, they smell delicious. Well, I'm so glad I learned this trick a few years ago about re-seasoning, or should I say, sanding down your lodge cast iron pans and skillets, and then re-seasoning them with flaxseed oil. It works so good. It makes a world of difference. It's better than Teflon when you do it. We've had these skillets and pots and pans, I shouldn't say pots and pans, but pans for a while now, and I just haven't taken the time to do it, but I'm so glad I did today because it's gonna make cooking easier and then cleanup so much easier. That pizza skillet we did, we use that all the time and it just, everything slides right off of it. So we're looking forward to having these skillets and pans done. I love the cast iron when it works right. When it doesn't work right, it's not fun at all. Do you guys use cast iron for your cooking and what tips and tricks do you have? Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey list, guys. You're a huge blessing to us in our homestead and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres.